Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Skullatorium. I'm Cliff, and this is a North American flathead catfish. I'm preparing this skull actually for my personal collection. This head supposedly comes from about a 55 pound catfish, which is fairly large for a flathead. Uh, this fish I am actually doing in honor of my father that passed away back in February of this year. He used to take me catfishing back when we were little kids, me and my brother, and it was quite a nice time during my childhood. So this is new for me also. I'm going to be doing a voiceover of this. If you like that, let me know. If you don't like it, also let me know. I appreciate everybody. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you can see when other videos are coming out. This is going to be probably, I believe, the longest video that I've ever uploaded to YouTube. You can see the beetles are really getting into it. It seems like they really, really like fish. Now, this is my main colony, my largest colony. <clears throat> They're really getting after it. And it looks a little bit slow at first, but the speed picks up. And it's mainly because I put this head in wet, which I don't really suggest people do whenever they're starting up a beetle colony. Uh, it can cause moisture issues, but the top of this one is basically uncovered with just a small screen on top. So the beetles can't get out, but they also get plenty of airflow. It kind of keeps the humidity down even when I put a big wet head like this in there. This is going to take quite a while, so strap in if you like. Or you could speed it up, I think, in YouTube also. A nice little feature that they added. And you could start to see uh, some dust appear around the specimen here. That dust is what we affectionately refer to as beetle frass. That's essentially the waste or the poop, for lack of a better term, the feces of the beetles. So while they're eating, they have these long kind of off-white strands of poop that come out of them and it will pile up and it is known as frass. And uh, there are reports in older times of people making beetle colonies and they use nothing for bedding except for the frass of the beetles. One drawback to a lot of frass that I've noticed is it gets stuck in the hairs on the larva. Now the larva of the beetle are a little bit bigger than the adult beetle once they get up to a size. They can be up to three quarters of an inch long and they're fuzzy, they're hairy. They're what's known as a woolly bear. So these guys are your workers just like caterpillars do all the eating before they turn into like a butterfly. Well, the larvae of a dermestid beetle actually do most of the work. The adults pretty much just nibble little tiny bits. They have, I believe, slightly stronger jaws so they can open a specimen up. You'll notice when you put a specimen in, it's always the adults that make it there first. And that's for several reasons. They're able to make openings where the larva cannot and also they start mating and laying eggs like right away so anytime <laughs> anytime a dermestid beetle finds something dead it kinda puts it in the mood and they will start to mate and lay eggs and they lay eggs all over the specimen and all around the specimen and what you'll notice is like maybe right about here we're at the four day mark and if you're able to look closely, you'll see a lot of little teeny tiny baby beetles that have hatched because it takes their eggs approximately three days to hatch. So when they first get on the specimen, they will lay eggs mm -hmm. and then over mm -hmm. time it will hatch and you will get a lot more little baby beetles and they do phenomenal work in little tight spaces. And what you'll see when you take the specimen out and the bones fall apart is in between those bones, the little tiny baby beetles are actually hiding. 
my light source is not really stable this is a pretty big head so the camera is actually pretty far back this isn't the greatest time-lapse camera in the world but it's what I can afford to bring you guys some content hopefully in the future I'll get better cameras more cameras be able to take multiple angles and do different things uh, I do have a patreon account set up if you'd like to check that out you guys can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram I speed up these videos and post shorts of them so if you don't like watching these long YouTube videos that is an option as well but for me it's kind of therapeutic to watch the Beatles work at about this pace they're going fast enough in this time lapse that you can actually see some work getting finished whereas on the uh, shorter ones it's just like they zip through it ultra fast because usually I'll speed up those clips to around 15 to 20 seconds I don't know if you guys just noticed but the head did just shift and that's because they are breaking down some of that connective tissue in between the bones so the bones do become loose as the Beatles work Contrary to what many people believe, I do not keep these fish skulls together. I stop the videos before they fall apart completely, but then I have to go take it out. And when I take out, especially these larger heads like this, they just fall apart as soon as you pick them up. And then you have to try to get the beetles out so the beetles hide between the bones especially on large specimens so if you don't take the bones apart you're gonna kill off a lot of your beetles and some people don't care they'll just buy in more or maybe their colony is large enough that they don't really care uh, for me the beetles equal money so I don't want to kill them off plus they're not only my workers they're kind of like my pets I actually enjoy raising beetles I've been using beetles to clean specimens on and off for the last 15 years or so before that I would use oxidization or hand flensing to clean my specimens and the beetles I was automatically hooked as soon as the first skull I ever cleaned was finished I could not believe that they did such a thorough job and it looked so amazing so I started keeping these guys and uh, although they are flesh-eating beetles they will only eat dead protein matter and uh, that's what a lot of people don't get so if you ever see a video of me taking bones out of the beetles or messing in the beetles generally I do it barehanded they're extremely clean creatures they do not like to be dirty and they are very kind of sterile I guess you would say unless they're actively working on something that is very nasty and rotten this head I always get asked this this head did not smell too bad while they were working on it despite the fact that before I deflesh this head by hand to prepare it for the beetles it probably weighed 20 pounds so this is a big head and uh, I cut probably at least 10 pounds of skin and muscle tissue and I did cut out the gills I'll be doing the gills separate to go back into this specimen like I was saying before I'm doing this to honor my father he used to take his catfishing all the time so I'm gonna be doing this one up real special it's gonna have its fins it's gonna have its whiskers also known as barbels it's going to be on a nice driftwood plaque and I'm going to be wood burning a little tribute into that for my father and uh, I will probably also do the eyes if you follow my work on any other accounts you'll know that I love to actually put the eyes in my fish specimens now when I'm doing custom work for people a lot of times they do not choose these options because it does rack up the price quite a bit it is difficult to do very specialized and I'm one of the only people in the world that does a lot of these things so it takes a lot of time and I want to be compensated 
Anyway, thank you for viewing. Have a nice day.